Oh, it's still there. Okay. Well then. Or maybe it wasn't. I didn't see the message. <laughs> well, whatever. Both faces were staring directly at me as if I'd somehow been designated their de facto leader. So after a moment's thought, I suggest we turn back. I didn't much care either way, but they obviously did, so it seemed the best course of action at the time. とはいえ、ここの備品だぞ。まずいに決まってるじゃないか。ちょっと見せてくれないか。いいけど、どうしたの破損した部分から何か見えている。As they say, sometimes the simplest solution really is the best. And if we wanted to see what was inside this thing, there is one surefire method. The Goya sculpture hit the ground with all the force I could muster and shattered into countless pieces. And there, among the wreckage, was a key made of copper. It looked old, but since it had been sealed away from the elements all this time, there wasn't a single trace of rust or corrosion on it. Clearly, this was an important item to have found. Now aware that Mitsuki's bag was not the safest place to store things, however, I pocketed it myself. With a click, the door unlocked. Oh, the room looks different than when we were in here with Yoshiki. Alcohol lamp. Still, metanol is still 
か手の跡っていうのはここについてるの死者 I hadn't noticed them at first, but Mitsuki was correct. There were small bloody handprints on the alcohol lamp. Small enough that they most likely were made by a child or children. This wasn't something we could leave behind. It was a real stroke of luck that we stumbled upon something so inherently useful. As the wick flared up, the whole hallway was bathed in a warm blue glow. And somehow the darkness just seemed to shrink away from it, powerless against this unexpectedly capable opponent. Collapsed on the ground was someone both of my companions clearly knew. She wore the same uniform as Yamamoto. Both Hukuro and Yamamoto immediately ran to her side and began attempting to rouse and console her. Frightened out of her mind, the now conscious schoolgirl slapped away Yamamoto's outstretched hand and shot to her feet. Mitsuki! What happened, Urabe? She darted her head around wildly, surveying her surroundings quickly and frantically like a wide-eyed fawn who sensed a predator closing in. What on earth could have happened to her? It was as if her own paranoia had completely drowned out the sounds of her friends and classmates to such an extent that she didn't even notice them. She was also perceptibly shaking, a lot more than she would from the cold rain alone, and her teeth were chattering. Something had truly spooked her. を見たんだろう。一人の方が
返事をしてくれ眉見て渡り廊下がある行ってみよう向こうにナーナいるかもしれないし私は武蔵川女子中学校1年6組天戸谷なりナーナというのは私の幼なじみのあだ名小笠原ナナさっきまで一緒にいたんだけど廊下を歩いているうちにはぐれてしまった同行者が一人いるんだけどこの子がまた、実に頼りない。待って、なりちゃん。足疲れた。はあ、これでもう何度目の泣き言だろう。Drama fit her to a T. If Nana were with us, I'm pretty sure she'd give it into Chihaya's whining and insist we take a break. But I'm not Nana, and I won't be guilted so easily. It really was just like leading a child around. She was as spoiled as can be. I truly felt it wasn't possible for any human being to be more spoiled than Chihaya. But it's not like I could really leave her behind, you know? She'd be dead in no time flat, as hopeless as she was. I told myself that I was going to find Nana in the second building, come hell or high water. Failure was not an option. A decaying human head has been forcibly crammed into the top left cubby. It mustn't have been easy to make it fit, as there are tiny pieces of flesh and scalp tissue all along the frame. Based on what's left of its facial features and the cut on of its hair, this was likely a male middle school student. Just, that's why I don't want to 
Chihaya seemed almost as if she were trying to hide behind my body from the side of the severed head, and she wound up pushing me forward in the process. If she didn't want to see it, she could just not look at it. Why did she need to be so grabby? Worse still, she was pushing me right into the shelf, giving me an uncomfortably close view of the head, not to mention the things crawling on it. These are portraits of influential people connected with this school, or possibly with this classroom specifically. Not an uncommon thing to find. In this atmosphere, though, it really looks like they're all staring directly at you, no matter what angle you view them from. It's creepy. These are portraits of influential people connected with this school, or possibly with this classroom specifically. Not an uncommon thing to find. In this atmosphere, though, it really looks like they're all staring directly at you, no matter what angle you view from them view them from. It's creepy. Suddenly, Chihaya tensed up and hid herself behind my back. You're not the only one who's scared, you know. There's a large hole in the floor here, blocking the way through this hall. The dull, gloomy corridor suddenly lit up brightly for just a moment. Was it lightning? But we weren't near any windows, and there was no thunder. There, glinting in the dim light, sat what appeared to be a component from some electronic device. In contrast with everything else in this school, it seemed like a fairly recent item, a decade old at most, but likely much newer. Might as well take it with us, I figured. Though if I gave it to Chihaya for safekeeping, it would no doubt wind up on the ground again somewhere, so I decided I'd just pocket the thing. On the other side of the hole, there was now a man collapsed in the ground. I couldn't see any obvious wounds on him, but he wasn't moving at all. It was hard to ascertain details in this dim light, but he seemed a bit too big to be a middle schooler or a high schooler, and he wasn't wearing a uniform.
死んでるのわかんないあのー、大丈夫ですかあのー、怪我してたりとか Still no response. なんか物投げてみようかなあいやまずいかナリちゃんこれそこに落ちてたカメラあの人のかな It was a fairly expensive looking DV camcorder and a well worn one at that with things and chips all over it nonetheless it looked like it probably still worked In my agitated state, I kicked a pair of hallway slippers that were sitting on the ground nearby, and they flew right into the dead girl's face. I grabbed her jaw and began shaking it around, and was a bit startled by the sensation. It felt just like I was touching living flesh. Except this person was very, very cold. Cold as a statue. A statue covered in skin and muscle. But a statue nonetheless. ないな。どうした。答えられないのかい。数日前なら君も反論できたろうし、俺の方の一発も引っ張ってきただろうにね。うーん、残念だな。えっと。あ、カイダ・アリサさん。冷静になれ。こんなことしても迷は見つからないぞ。大地、この子は何の罪もない被害者じゃないか。いいことを教えてやろうか。君はね、なかなかの美人だけど、これから腐っていくんだ。どんどんくさって肉がぐちゅぐちゅのスープみたいになって皮膚がたるんで垂れ下がり目玉は生卵みたいにこぼれ落ちるトイレの便器よりもひどい悪臭を振りまきながら腹は玉を顔も口の中も
I flipped my cell phone back on and switched it to camera mode, centering the lens on the lovely Miss Kaida. Her slashed and broken gaze was focused ahead of her at a downward facing angle, yet in contrast to these entries she wore a peaceful expression on her face, almost as if she were po posing for me, just waiting for me to hit that shutter button. いいね。アンダルシアの犬って笑顔知ってるかい。今の君にぴったりだよ。もう一枚いいかな。ひょっとしたら君は生きてた時よりも今の方が魅力的かもしれない。うん、そんな気がするよ。<笑><笑> I tried poking her wound with my finger and heard a moist, squishy sound as my fingertip was swallowed up. She'd gone cold, but I guess there was still some blood left in her. Either that or decomposition was already well underway. I pushed farther in, digging my finger through the gaps between her muscles until it struck something smooth and hard. As I drew my face into her forehead, a few particles of perfume scented the foul odor of sweat and sebum that had heretofore been assaulting my nostrils. Ah,ここに閉じ込められて、ろくに髪も洗えなかったのに、身だしなみを忘れないなんて、けなけだね。でも。君<笑> しかし、こういう状況ではストレスを溜め込むのは禁物だ。こうして発散させることは悪いことじゃない。そう、たまたまだ。たまたまここに死体があったから、俺はそういえば田口さんが警察に提出するために<笑> Amidst the darkness of the corridors, I spotted human figures, living ones this time. Two of them, both female and both much younger than I, I approached them without making a noise or saying a single word to announce myself. <laughs> Junior high, I'd guess, maybe 12 or 13 years old. One was clearly much more fear-prone than the other, as she'd wrapped herself around her companion's arm and was actively trying to hide behind her. She was looking in my general direction, but with the lighting as dim as it was, I had no idea whether or not she could see me. And while fighting survivors in this land of the dead was a rare occurrence indeed, my focus was squarely on the man sprawled out farther down the hall. He was unconscious, 
possibly worse, and an uncrossable gap separated us, but I definitely recognized him. It was Taguchi. Was I concerned about him? Did I feel for him? Honestly, no. I felt nothing whatsoever at that moment. I was simply asking because I was curious. I'm normally calm and stoic, sure, but this seemed cold even by my standards. Did I really not care one way or another if he were dead? The girl handed me a beat up DV camera. No doubt about it, this was the same one Taguchi had been looking into when I met him earlier. I took it without a word and immediately tried to turn it on, but to no avail. It had no power. I placed the battery pack into the DV camera and immediately saw the red power light pop on. Still fully functional by all appearances. ここで何してるんだい。えっと。あの。友達を探しているんです。小笠原奈々と霧神光っていう。武蔵川女子中学の同級生なんですけど。それから高等部の先輩たちも。私は天戸や成。この子は山瀬千早って言います。そうか。中学生か。そっちの小さな君。どことなく。何の話ですか。あなたは高校生ですよね。俺の人を探してるんだ。鈴本舞ってあの。<笑> それよりまず名乗るのが礼儀だと思うんですけど。ああ、すまない。俺は森重作太郎。木更木学園の2年だ。それでさっきの話だけど、舞を知らないかい。この写真の子なんだけど。I flipped open Mayu's student ID to its photo page, almost as if I were a sheriff flashing my badge, but the responses from these two were not encouraging. They exchanged a quick glance with one another, then shook their heads. I rewound the tape a bit and put the camera in playback mode. Immediately, horrifying imagery began to display on the device's tiny LCD screen. Audio was irrelevant. It seemed like the only sounds on the tape were those of Taguchi's ragged breathing and footsteps and his occasional self-mutterings. 90% of the video footage then consisted of dead bodies, while the remaining 10% was mostly just the camera autofocusing in the dim light. Each body was shot from a variety of angles, so their causes of death could be easily determined. Guess he really was planning on showing this to the police. The two nosy girls were peeking in on the video's contents over my shoulder, and neither seemed certain quite how to react. I'm 
いくつもこれなんてまるでシーレの絵みたいだ綺麗だだけど惜しいな田口さんの視点は作業的だ映像を見る他人の目を意識しているし死者に遠慮している俺ならもっと Well, he wasn't trying to, you know, really.、Mm, how to say. He wasn't looking at them with a necrophiliac's gaze. He was, like, literally trying to get information to help police,、um, you know, reaching out to the families on this. どうしたんだいなんで笑ってるんです<笑>笑ってる俺が笑ってますよ嬉しそうにそれは<笑>変だな私たちもう行きます行くどこへ友達探してる途中なんで何をそんなに慌ててるんだい協力できることがあるかもしれないよいいです私たちだけで頑張りますからさよなら<笑>何を勘違いしたんだか俺のことを変質者か何かだと思ったのかな ?Do you wonder where they got that idea? 誤解を解くのも面倒だ。それに、なかなか面白い反応だったしな。カメラは置いておこう。これは田口さんの目だ。他人の視線で見ても、いまいち感情に訴えてこない。俺は俺自身の目で見てもっと触れたい俺は俺だけのコレクションが欲しいいや死者を自分のものにしたいのか待て何を考えている俺はマイを探してるんだぞ撮影はただのストレス発散だマイを探す前に俺が自暴自棄になっては話にならないからその防衛策だそう眉を探すための手段でしかない目的と手段を履き違えちゃダメだだがもっと見たい Taguchi is completely motionless. It's impossible to tell from here if he's dead, though, or simply unconscious. After bracing myself for an indeterminate amount of time, the earthquake finally subsided. There's a candle shimmering here, along with a note. Whatever you do, don't look behind you. Lisa will get your soul. ハ
乱してるみたいだな何があったんだ山本さんサワルだ違う違うお前やっぱりお前も誤解だよこれはさっき死体を調べた時におかしいって思ったんだあんなに平気で死体に触ってやっぱりやっぱりだこれじゃ何を言っても無駄だな私は騙されないもう引っかからない<笑>やかましい女だ生きている人間はうるさくてかなわないな人は寡黙な方がいい山本さんもう行ってしまったのかいどこか落ち着ける場所へ行こうそうだまたあそこにそういえば今日は眉にセビリアの理髪師の録画を頼まれていた<笑>時間までに家へ帰らないと And here I was again. I pressed the button on my phone to shut off the second alarm I'd set. If this time display were accurate, then there was no chance of making it home in time to record the show for Mayu. I slid my finger naturally, almost automatically, from shutting off the alarm to opening my folder of saved photos. There was no sound in the room other than the tone of my button presses, and virtually no light other than that which shone from the LCD screen, or so it seemed anyway. Yet this was my rock. In this place, I could truly relax. Here and here alone, I felt at peace. The air was filled with the overpowering aroma of blood and entrails. It would be enough to make most people vomit, but for me, it was a smell to savor. I'd even describe it as comforting. Perhaps it's because it reminded me that I was in her presence. She who decorated the wall like a flower in full bloom. When I sat across from her, I felt more at ease than I can possibly convey in words. It was as if she'd always be here for me. As if she were waiting for me. And sure enough, whenever I felt weary or needed respite, the door to this infirmary would always open for me, despite its tendency to the contrary. Each time it did, too, I would always be drawn in as if the room were swallowing me up, and my eyes would always happen upon this offering first. This girl upon the wall, slowly drying and slowly rotting, would always be there to greet me. Never once did I tire of the sight. I'd begun talking to myself, or maybe I was talking to her. Within my phone's memory were stored some of man's most sensual, most voluptuous objects chart. She was the tip of the brush, the grand prelude. I'd amassed a whole other building's worth of beautiful sculptures to admire now, too. I was thrilled to bursting. <laughs> this was the sculpture known as Mitsuki Yamamoto in life. But in death, she was my property, one of my many pieces of found art. Those spirited eyes, now dulled and clammy, 
those lips that spoke such harsh words, now stained with blood, her abdomen shredded, her innards exposed. So alluring, so captivating was she now. Sometimes destroying that which is beautiful only serves to make it more beautiful. And truly, this was the proof. It was a shame that I could only gaze upon these gorgeous works of art within these school grounds. Before returning home with Mayu, I need to erase every one of these photographs from my phone. It seemed like such a waste. The world in which I once dwelled was far too narrow-minded to accept these masterpieces. It was often a hard place to call home. As long as I had Mayu with me, I could endure. And to that end, this folder was an obstacle, a detriment, a hurdle to be overcome before I could rejoin the world of the living. I needed to delete it, to put it all behind me. For those of you who don't know, Shangri-La is actually the name of the theme song from the first game. And that's what that melody is, and the song that she sings. So we clear the chapter. But yet there's so much more we can do. That'll wait for the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Do please like, subscribe, and fave for more Corpse Party, Book of Shadows, and other videos.